I have got a very special treat for you today, especially if you're a fan of the classic TV series Gunsmoke. So what is this extra special treat? Well, it's an audio recording of an episode of the long-lost Gunsmoke spin-off, Dirty Sally. I was recently given a digitized version of this recording by a fellow classic TV fan named Tom Reed, who had a good friend named J.B. Annigan, who before video cassette recorders became popular, used to record the audio from TV shows onto cassettes, just like this one. I did that too when I was a kid. Unfortunately, I did not have the foresight to preserve them. They all got recorded over as time went on. Anyway, there are no episodes of Dirty Sally anywhere that I can find. Tom has looked as well. This recording may be the very last artifact of the show's existence, which is kind of heartbreaking because Dirty Sally was really good. In fact, the actress who played Sally Fergus, Jeanette Nolan, was nominated for an Emmy for her work on the show, which ran for just a half season before being canceled. The episode that we're listening to here is the third episode of the series, titled The Old Soldier. It originally aired on the 25th of January, 1974. Speaking of 1974, at the appropriate breaks in this program, I'm going to be inserting classic television commercials from that year. All right, enough yapping. Let's take a trip back in time and enjoy this long-lost classic television episode. Together they hit the trail for California. And together they hit the trail for California. to California. Great, big, tall, good-looking, handsome fellow like you. There's a lady waiting along this trail for you someday. Someday you're going to come to me all soppy and misty-eyed and disgusted as I can be. You'll say, Sally, I found me the woman of my life. We're getting married in the morning. Ah, now, don't get all right. That's just flat isn't going to happen. <laughs> oh, yes, it is, too. And you're going to expect me to go on alone. And that's all right. Worthless and me against the world. We did it before, didn't we, honey? <laughs> I tell you, it's just not going to happen. I'm just not going to get married. But you. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny? Oh, nothing. <laughs> nothing, just something I thought. Well, what, what did you think? All right. <laughs> all right, well, I know I'm not getting married. But then it come to me that, <laughs> that you could. Oh, that's, that, that's funny, huh? The thought that I could get married, that seems ridiculous to you. Suppose you think I never had no chances. I suppose you think nobody ever asked me to. No, no, I, I didn't say that. I suppose you think I never had no offers. Oh, yes, I did. I had lots of offers. I'm sure you did, Sally. I, I'm sure you did. You don't believe me. You think the only reason I'm out here is because I never had no place else to go. Well, that's wrong. And I can't prove it to you. And I'm too prideful to try. But know it in your heart, boy. You're wrong. You're dead, dead wrong. <coughs> Have you ever been to Fort Lawton before, boy? No, why? There's something about an army town that warms my heart. What's that? The quality of whiskey is better. Sended you out north against the Blackfoot. You ain't gonna have no trouble. They can't fight. Oh, you gotta find yourself a Cheyenne. If you're looking for a fight, I heard the Cheyenne was just a bunch of farmers. 
I heard it was the Apaches was mean. You heard. You heard. Sonny, you're talking to a sergeant major of cavalry who wore out more saddles than you have socks. You ain't a sergeant major anymore. <laughs> no, I ain't, baby. <laughs> Sally Fergus. Why not? What? I mean, it's nice to see you. That's right, gentlemen, the area. You drunk? Some. Oh, you never could hold your liquor. Why, when we were in Fort Dodge, he used to try to match me shot for shot. He never once made me like Oh, <laughs> now, Sally, that ain't true. It is true, Shoes. I'm standing here. And then there was another time. Why don't you tell him about the time you actual kept your mouth shut. <laughs> that being a most unusual thing. <laughs> Boy, you really do know her, don't you, Sergeant? Sam, why ain't you in uniform? Because I ain't in the army no more. Then put me out to pasture. Gonna leave the fighting to such as these. You ought to see that mess all out at that fort. Ain't nothing like Dodge was. I are giving them bibs now. <laughs> <laughs> this here one's Pike. He and me is going to the far west again. Howdy. Howdy, Sergeant. You uh, two known each other for a long time? More than 20 years. Seems longer. Oh, uh, say, why don't we all have a drink, huh? The boy thinks well. And he can handle his liquor. More than I could ever see for you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, how come you're hanging around here? Got no place else to go. What's the smell, Sam? That's perfume, Sally. You ought to try it. Oh, Laureleen. Can I get you anything, Sergeant Major? Yeah. <laughs> you can get me a bottle of whiskey at that table. Laureleen, this here, Sally Fergus. This is Pike. I'll be happy to serve you. <laughs> Came up short, didn't you? Say, I sure like that perfume. Well, thank you, Mr. Pike. What's it called? Oh, it's from Paris, France. I can't pronounce the name. No need to. Um, would you like your drink at the table or here at the bar? Well, it seems like if we were to stay here, I'd get more of a chance to talk to you. That would be nice. A drink for Mr. Pike. Are uh, you going to be in town long, Mr. Pike? Oh. You ain't some drunk. You was all the way drunk. I'll be all right. Don't you worry about me, none. Ah, I never did before. Why should I start now? You ain't changed a bit. Not a bit. Sam Concannon, look me in the eye. Keep looking down at the floor as if you was ashamed of something. I don't care if you're drunk. But you ain't even happy. What is the matter with you? Well, there ain't many things to be real joyful about these days. Here you are. Are you all right, Sergeant? I'm fine, Laurel. Just fine. My, you smell nice. Thank you. <laughs> He's a nice man, the Sergeant. He just needs somebody. He does, does he? I knowed him at a time when he didn't. Come on, Sam. Sober up. Sober up and watch me drink. <laughs> Look, Sam. Attention. Sit at attention. Two whiskeys, Henry. We were on our way to California, but, uh... Looks like we might just be staying around here for a while. Say, I was thinking maybe this evening we might get together. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Pike, but I'm busy this evening. Well, maybe if we were to stay over through tomorrow. <laughs> well, um, I'm busy every evening. Oh. Well, the last to ask. I'd have just died if you didn't. Oh, Sam, I'm going to have to walk you some. Sober you up. At least... All right, Sally. I'm fine. Now you can. I'm fine. All My right. coat. 
All right, get your coat. Right, there you are. Now, come on. Here we go. I'm going to walk Sam over to the Morton house and sit with him, Mr. Bell. Are we going to be here overnight? What if we are? What's the matter with you? Could you get yourself an invite? <laughs> come on, Sam. That's it. Come on. Sam, you better have another one. There you go. Are you feeling some better, are you? I guess so. I don't usually go to bed so. <laughs> there was a time when I didn't make a habit of it myself. <laughs> Sam, what happened to you? You was never like this. A man spends his whole life in the army. All of a sudden, he's out of it. Can't let it go. Too drunk to hear that. I don't like hearing that. Oh, you were always married to the army, and you still are. You ain't even in it, and you're still married to it. Oh, tomorrow you be off to the gold fields. Maybe I'll just pack up a few things and go on along. Along with you. Why not? Sir, this is Mrs. Fergus to see you, sir. Miss Fergus. Show the lady in. I won't take much of your time, Colonel. But I'm not going to be here very long, and this is very important. And there's something I can do for you, Miss Fergus? I hope so. That's what I come to ask. Please do. The Army is making a waste of a fine soldier, and I think it's a mistake. That would be, of course, if it's true. Oh, it's true, all right. It's... It's ex-Sergeant Major of Cavalry Sam Concannon. About the best horse soldier this army ever had. Yes, yes, indeed. Yeah. Then why did you let him out? He was retired at the mandatory age. But them is just rules. You can break them or bend them a little. You're discussing military matters now, Miss Fergus. They may be military matters to you, but that's my army, too, and it's Sam's, and he loves it, and he never loved anything else and never will, and he needs to get back in. I'm afraid in the Sergeant Major's case, that's impossible, Miss Fergus. You've seen him recently, I take it? I'm sorry, but there's no other way to put it. Ever since that man's been out of the service, he's become a drunk. We simply couldn't take a chance on him. He's become a drunk because he's been put out of your service. We have no way of knowing that for sure. I'm sorry, Miss Fergus. You mean you won't even think about it a little? I'm afraid not, Miss Fergus. Army issue, is it? Huh? Just a little memento of my niece. What a coincidence.
first time ever, save $5 on our original, realistic pocket weather radio. Now on sale at Radio Shack stores, only $10.95. Indoors or out, you get the latest U.S. Weather Service reports instantly. Thousands sold at our regular low price of $15.95, but now for one week only, it's only $10.95. You save $5. Rain or Shine, the exclusive, realistic pocket weather radio. And there's only one place you can find it. Radio Shack. Uh, having company tonight? No, I'm eating alone. Well, that's two pounds, usually enough for four. At this price? Yeah, uh, would you care to join me? Sure. Oh, having a party? No, just us two. Well, isn't that enough for four? <laughs> With buffet supper main dishes from Banquet, you get more than you bargained for. You could order me a drink. I'll even pay for it myself if I have to. Oh, I'll buy it. Bottle for it, That's how sweet of you. Yeah, thank you. Well, I suppose you're feeling all chesty. Since you lost that young thing to the colonel. How did you know about the colonel? Oh, I'm getting old enough so some of me don't work, but my sniffer still does. How did you know about the colonel? He's got to be too smart to tell. Imagine that old coot snooping around a young flippity gibbet like that. The world is give over decency. Funny thing, you know, the colonel ain't exactly what you'd call sneaking around. Why is that? Well, the colonel's a widower. They're saying around that he might just be about three quarters of the way serious. Are you certain sure of that? Yeah. Those fellows down there at the end of the bar? Civilian scouts with the army, they know all about it. Three quarters of the way serious. If a saloon girl went up to be at a colonel's lady, that would be quite a step, wouldn't it? <laughs> I reckon. <laughs> oh, me, old lady. You've got that I'm about to busy around in somebody else's life look on your face. Oh, me? Yes, you. Thanks, boys. to talk a spell. Well, I have this appointment. Well, it, it's about that appointment that I wanted to talk to you. You want to marry this Colonel Soldier Boy, is that it? Well, I... But he kind of likes things the way he is. No responsibilities or nothing. Now, child, you don't have to answer. But if I know a way to make him pop the question, would that interest you? Miss Fergus? Let's sit down and talk. Sam, California calls. El Dorado, the gold fields, all that stuff. Gold fields. Well, go with you. Well, don't tell me you forgot. You promised to go to the far west with me. I did? Yes, Sam. And a promise is a promise. Oh, Sally, it's early. It's too early. Oh, no, Sam. It's never too early to make our fortune. Oh. There. Oh, Sam. Oh, Sam, Cannon, if I didn't know you better, I'd say that you was hanged over. Sally. Sometimes in the morning, a man needs a little... A little shooter to get your blood pumping. That's it. Where's your bottle? It's right here. Oh. <laughs> That's a good idea. What about me? Oh, no, Sam. Your drinking days are over. You're going to California, and you will be... A clear-eyed and steady man. You will arrive there sober and as gentlemanly as ever you were. And then we will go down the road and we'll come to a town. And 
Maybe the town will have a little church and a preacher. I think a church is nice, don't you? And then we'll get ourselves married. We might even have a baby. A baby what? Need some help? No, I like carrying trunks around. Uh, Here, uh, that's oh. Hello, Laureline. Sergeant? Laureline is going with us to California. Come on. Oh. Get up there now, honey. Help him get up. Just get on up there. Come on. He has a Come little on. rocky time. He feels a mite delicate in the morning, you know. But we're going to change all that, ain't we, sweetheart? And uh, now put the sugar up around him. Yes, keep him warm and get some morning chill. Yes, and now with Mr. Pike going to California with him, something special. So you could give him a little pet. Not a big one, just a little one. And give the sergeant a little pet. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Sir, it's Miss Fergus again. Good morning, Colonel. Ain't it nice to see you again? I came to say goodbye. What's going on out there? Oh, is something going on? Where? That wagon. Lurleen. Oh, well, since you wouldn't put a sergeant major back in the army, I decided I'd better take him along to California. And Laureline, you know, she's so fond of Sam. He's been like a father to her. And it's downright heartening to see how she cares for older men. Yes, see how she takes care of them. And Mr. Pike, yes, he's going along on the trip, too, all the way to California. I thought it'd be awfully nice for Laureline to have someone her own age. Mm. I understand they have civilian scouts at Fort Dodge. I hear tell that you have them here, too. If the Sergeant Major was to become a civilian scout, I reckon little Laureline would just naturally have to go wherever he was sent, or wherever he... Stayed. Corporal! Yes, sir. Sergeant Major Concanon will report to this office at once. Yes, sir. Time for the oh, for my little Christmas. Yes, sir. Never forget Christmas. <laughs> I did it all for you, Christmas. You know that, don't you, honey? I didn't expect you to take four people all the way to California, no. Honey, you go ahead and eat it. I'm going to go and see how this thing is working out. I'll be back in just a minute now. Well, I just didn't think that you were serious about me. And... Oh, I was getting so fond of you. So, uh, I thought I'd better leave town before I got hurt. Suppose you were to become Colonel William Lockhart's wife. Is that a proposal, Will? Because if it is, why, well, I just couldn't possibly leave for California. That's a proposal, Miss Grant. I don't know how to tell you. Something terrible has happened. Well, what was that, Sam? I can't go to California with you. Not now. I've been ordered back into the Army as a scout. They said they needed me. The Colonel said it himself. And what did you say, Sam? It's a man's duty. I mean, it's an Army man's duty. And you are an Army man. 
I am. And an army man must do his duty. He must. No matter who he hurts or what he has to give up. Sam. You're a brave man. And you're a fine soldier. I try to be. Goodbye, Sam. Goodbye, Sally. Sam Con Cannon that asked you to marry him, huh? <laughs> he was one of them. Oh, one of them. Sure it was. Mm. Ah, that army whiskey it ain't nothing like it. You know, old lady, I'm of the belief that if you were asked to be married, <laughs> you'd be married. Well, Bucko, you can believe anything you want to believe. It ain't too long since I was asked by a millionaire. Mr. Lucius Prince of Philadelphia. I reckon you could say just knowing that ain't enough to wrap up with at night and keep warm. But on the other hand, maybe it is a thought. Yes, sir. Maybe it is. Here are the kids from City Park doing a Libby's, Libby's, Libby's commercial. You will like it, like it, like it. Oh, we like Libby juices because everybody gets a can. You will like it. Libby's apricot nectar is my favorite. Louder, Tommy. I drink Libby's all the time. On the lab, on the table. What is it? It says Libby's, Libby's, Libby's on the label, label, label. Ta-da! What you're doing is against the law. When you first met me, I was an outlaw on the run. You helped me. Well, look at me now. I'm up to my bloomers and convicts. I've already started. Oh! Please, ma'am. Me? You ever done your midwifing? I done everything there is to do once and most things twice. 